In a previous video, I showed you how to derive the expressions for the gradient and divergence in spherical coordinates, starting with the covariant derivatives typically found in tensor calculus. And in this video, I'm going to extend on that and show you how to calculate the curl in spherical coordinates, starting with the covariant derivatives usually found in tensor calculus. So as mentioned in the previous video, there are two kinds of bases at play. The one that's typically used in tensor calculus, which is called the covariant basis, and the one that's typically used in vector calculus, which is the orthonormal basis. So here I've given the definition of the orthonormal basis, and for diagonal metrics the relationship between the orthonormal basis and the covariant basis, and then the relationship that that implies between contravariant vectors in the orthonormal basis and in the covariant basis. So ultimately, because we're looking for the vector calculus standard expression for the curl in spherical coordinates, what we're looking for is the curl of the contravariant orthonormal basis components instead of in the covariant basis, which uh, is what tensor calculus is usually expressed in. So in terms of the covariant basis, this is the definition of the curl. The goal is to evaluate that for spherical coordinates and then change basis to the orthonormal basis. The main reason for evaluating it in the covariant basis first and then changing to the orthonormal basis is to make the problem easier. That's basically it. Now you can see that the curl here is defined in terms of the ultimately covariant components. You can see that if you just recognize that this is the metric contracted with a vector and therefore just lower that index, then you're just taking the covariant derivative of uh, the covariant vector. But the thing is, is this is usually expressed in terms of the contravariant components. So to get the expression that matches standard vector calculus, you need to have the contravariant vectors components uh, in your formula <clears throat> and just recognize that because it's defined in terms of a covariant derivative of the covariant components, that you need to have that extra factor of the metric in there in order to express it in terms of the contravariant components to get the standard expression. This definition here implies this value for the curl we first construct this anti-symmetric tensor out of covariant derivatives, basically these quantities here. So these components inside those parentheses there, we basically construct the anti-symmetric part of that rank two tensor. Then the curl, given this formula, is stipulated, or rather is given by this formula in terms of the components of this anti-symmetric part of the rank two tensor in those parentheses. So ultimately, because we are taking the covariant derivatives of a covariant quantity, I've written out there the formula for the covariant derivatives of a covariant vector, and these are the Christoffel symbols in terms of the metric. So those are necessary for evaluating this covariant derivative because they show up in there and make the covariant derivative covariant. So the metric tensor for flat space and spherical coordinates is this standard value there. And then when you actually evaluate the Christoffel symbols for a metric like that, these are the results you get, where the first index indicates the row and the second the column, so it's pretty standard. Then if you look up here at these covariant derivatives of a covariant vector and you evaluate them, specifically remembering to express the covariant vector in terms of its contravariant components via the metric, then you get this answer here. Then if you go on and construct the anti-symmetric part, uh, as is called for by this formula, you get that answer there. Then, of course, we, from this definition, deduce this formula for the curl in terms of the components of this anti-symmetric tensor. So we can just insert the requisite components in and also the 1 over square root determinant of the metric factor, and we get this answer. However, this still doesn't match the standard answer because it's still in the covariant basis. So when we talked at the beginning of the video about the covariant versus orthonormal basis, we saw that there was this relationship between the basis vectors of the two bases, 
and this relationship between contravariant vectors in the two bases. So we can just substitute those relations in, and when we do that, therefore to transform it into the orthonormal basis from the covariant basis, we get this value, this value down here is a bit off screen there, and that actually is the standard answer. That is the standard uh, curl of a vector in spherical coordinates. That's how it ultimately comes about. It's not quite as straightforward as you might think. You have to make sure you change bases properly, and you have to make sure that you've got the right type of components in there, and that you're taking the right kind of covariant derivative. But when you do take the right kind of covariant derivative, specifically the covariant derivative of uh, the covariant version of the vector, but then remember to express that in terms of the contravariant vector components like that, and then you also make sure to express it in terms of the right basis, then it actually all works out right and you're good to go. So that is how you calculate the standard vector calculus curl formula in spherical coordinates starting with the usual covariant derivatives that you're used to. Dietrich out.